Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Jaksurun Militanyena Tasma Shri Gurave Namaha Namao Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Precharine Nervise Shashunyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bio Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Welcome everyone to our uh, Bhakti Vaibhav class. We're studying Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, today we're beginning uh, chapter number 10 of the first canto, Srimad Bhagavatam. Alright, let's share the screen. Is everyone okay? You can see the slide okay? Okay. So Unit 4, Canto 1, Chapters 10 to 13, Lesson 1, Principles of Leadership, the Reign of Maharaj Yudhisthira. We're going to hear first the overview of the chapter. So we remember last chapter, chapter 9, we were talking about the departure of Grandfather Bhishma, Bhishma Dev, leaving the world. And prior to his leaving the world, he spent many, many days instructing Maharaj Yudhisthira. And he was instructing Maharaj Yudhisthira in how to rule the kingdom how to look after the welfare of all the citizens. So chapter 10 begins with Shonakarishi questioning Sudha Goswami about Maharaj Yudhisthira's rule after the Kurukshetra battle. Of course we remember, we heard about how some 640 million people had died during the war, so Maharaj Yudhisthira was certainly in a difficult state. He was uh, very much disturbed, considered himself to be responsible for the death of all these people. And Bhishma Dev certainly did his best to pacify the mind of Yudhisthira Maharaj and encourage him to take the responsibility and rule because ultimately this was the desire of Lord Krishna. That Lord Krishna, who was personally present with them, desired to see the Pandavas rule the, rule the world. So, in reply to Sonakarishi's question, Sutta Goswami describes 
the situation during Maharaj Yudhisthira's reign. And we'll spend the today, the class today, we're going to be spending the class just discussing the situation, what exactly was the situation during Maharaj Yudhisthira's reign. After that, then we'll hear about Lord Krishna's departure, leaving Hastinapur and going to Dwarka. Right? This was Queen Kunti's prayers, that she, her ties of affection, she was tied to Hastinapur. At the same time, she had affection for Dwarka. So difficult to uh, disentangle herself, her affection for both, both places. So then we, we will hear about the ladies of Hastinapur and their wonderful appreciation of Lord Krishna. The ladies of Hastinapur are all on the rooftops watching Lord Krishna leave to Dwarka and they're offering very nice words. And then at the end of the chapter we will hear how the Lord accepts the, the prayers of the ladies and goes off to Dwarka. All right, so this is the, the, the topics. We'll have one lesson, for, one class today about the first section, and then tomorrow, or oh, rather next week, uh, we will study the other two sections on the Saturday, and we'll go on to chapter 11 on Sunday. So this section was entitled about principles of leadership. Leadership, right? But it's an inter interesting topic. Of course, you know, we don't really think of ourselves as being leaders, but we're all members of ISKCON, and uh, just by the fact that we're members of ISKCON, we have a, a responsibility to the society to lead them and to show the right example. It's important for all of us, therefore, to understand the principles of leadership. Sometimes we, see, we think that principles, leadership is for only for the people on the top, only for the managers, only for the... But managing is different from leadership. I was listening to one well-known uh, speaker on leadership, and he was saying that nobody likes to be managed. You know, nobody says, manage me. But we're happy to, to, be, to be led. We, we want a leader. We want somebody we can follow. We don't like m people managing us, but we like to be led. So leadership, very important. And the leadership can also come from down. It's not that leaders are all on the top. You have also a people on the, on the bottom level. They can also be wonderful leaders. A lot of these big people, that, you know, like the CEO or the big administrators, they may be big administrators, but it doesn't mean they're leaders. They may not be showing the, the proper nature of leaders. Anyway, here, in the case of Maharaj Yudhisthira, certainly he, we're talking about leadership from the top. So, we begin here. We ask you, have a look at the purport to text number three. Oh, may, let's first start with the chapter. Let me get the text. Just a minute, I'll put the text up on the screen here and we can look at it. I wanted to show you, uh, yeah, here, the first verse, uh, right? Shona, can, can you see the verse, everyone? No, we can't. Huh? No, no. Oh, you're not able to see it. Wait, I'll have to, I'll have to share the screen again then. Mm.
Can you see it now? Yes. You can see the text, yeah? Yeah. Okay, good. So the first verse of the 10th chapter, right? I've marked two significant words. Uh, Sonaka, of, Sonaka Rishi was speaking, and he, he, although it's not mentioned in the English, it's actually there in the Sanskrit. And when Prabhupada was giving a lecture on this verse, he quoted this. Uh, he quoted this, this statement, this Pradyavarudha Bhojana, Pradyavarudha Bhojana, that uh, Maharaj Yudhisthira, because Maharaj Yudhisthira felt himself to be responsible for the death of so many people, so he was, he, he was doing atonement. You know, when you when you perform some sinful activity, then we will we will want to atone for it. If we have a a, a good consciousness, if we have a guilty consciousness, we will want to make some kind of atonement to try to make up for what we've done. And this these two words indicate that Maharaj Yunastir was doing like that. Restricted acceptance of necessities, bojana. Of course, it's a food. He he reduced his eating. That's one type of atonement which would make. Certainly, you can understand after the battle of Kurukshetra, with the death of so many of his citizens, so many friends and relatives, his, the sons and. So many people died, so he did not have much of an, much appetite. You're not going to feel like enjoying after seeing so many people die. You won't have much appetite. And so it's mentioned like this by Shona Karishi, that was he able to rule? Surely he could not freely enjoy the kingdom with unrestricted consciousness. Certainly his consciousness was not unrestricted. He was feeling very disturbed by the death of so many people during the battle. So Shonakarishi makes this inquiry that uh, what was the situation? And so then text number two begins with Sutta Goswami's reply and he describes about how Lord Krishna is the maintainer of the world, and Maharaj Yudhisthira, uh, uh, Lord Krishna is happy to see Maharaj Yudhisthira on the throne, and he's, that the Kuru dynasty has now been established under Maharaj Yudhisthira. So, Krishna wanted this, he arranged like this. And Prabhupada describes, you know, like a bamboo for forest fire takes place, nobody's responsible. So it's not, it's the arrangement of Krishna, it's the plan of the Lord. The Lord wanted that Maharaj Yudhisthira was on the throne and that the people have a, a better chance to become God conscious. Prabhupada writes, the battle, just here at the end of the, the end of the verse, the battle of Kurukshetra was fought according to the plan of the Lord, so that undesirable persons could get out of the world, and a peaceful kingdom under his devotee could be established. The Lord was therefore fully satisfied when King Yudhisthira was on the throne, and the seedling of the dynasty of Kuru in the person of Maharaj Parikshit was saved. Right? So, like that. And then Sutta Goswami then goes on to describe the situation with Maharaj Yudhisthira on the throne. How, what happens? What's the situation in the kingdom? We're going to hear about it though. This is the third verse, right? And so this is the question which we are asking you. Can you see this text? Yes. Okay, principles of leadership. 
in the purport it says the modern elected executive head of a state is just like a puppet. So we ask you, can you identify some general principles of leadership given in this purport? Would you like to take a few minutes and just read over the purport and see if you can pick out some principles of leadership which are given here? We'll give you five, five minutes to read it over. All right. Do you need more time? Rajshaker Prabhu has raised his hand, Maharaj. Okay, so we'll hear from Rajshaker. Please give us just one item which you think is important.
they don't have power. They are in democracy, they don't have got the power that you can find. Okay. So you're saying you're in favor of monarchy rather than democracy? Yes, Maharaj. You're saying this oh. is... All right. So, can, uh, does everyone agree with this? Of course, nowadays we don't have monarchs, we don't have kings, but you know, you do have situations where politicians become like a king. You can see, for example, in China today, they have a, the China, the head of the Communist Party, Xi Jinping, that he, he's, the, the, after he became the head, they made it a rule that he would stay for life. So previously, it was elect, you know, they would elect a new chairman every four years. But after he came in, they changed it that he's in for life and he's in charge for life. So he becomes like the emperor of China again. So he's not a king, but he's, he made himself like a king. So you do have that kind of thing. And similarly, there was the, the, the similar case was there in Cuba. Fidel Castro was ruling Cuba. And that was for life. He ruled it for life. So he was like a king without actually being a, a king. And you have the same North Korea, the communists. You know, call these communist countries, they're dictatorships. Today, where, where we have kings, they don't have any power. Anybody else like to comment on this point about having a, a, the leader should have kingly power? Yes? Uh, in fact, well, uh, uh, Sri Prabhupada used to speak to uh, Prime Minister uh, Indra Gandhi. Indra Gandhi, she, uh, he used to say that uh, you take uh, Lee, uh, let us uh, discuss the Bhagavad Gita over the India, and let uh, Sanjay Gandhi be Prime Minister. So let him do, and you, uh, we should teach Bhagavad Gita. That's what uh, philosophy of Sri Prabhupada. Oh. I didn't quite understand everything you said. You said Indira Gandhi, Prabhupada wanted Indira Gandhi to... to uh, engage her in the teaching of uh, Bhagavad Gita. Oh. Uh, leave the, the politics and hand over charge to his son, Sanjay Gandhi. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> I know Prabhupada wanted that all the members of parliament should be twice initiated Brahmins. And he wanted that they should all follow the four principles. That was one of the proposals he was going to put to Indira Gandhi. Hmm. So sometimes the mo modern day politicians are like kings, kingly power. We don't see any kings to, in the present time in the world today. You, th there are kings, but they have no power. Maybe in the Arab states, in the Arabs, Arab states where there are, there are rulers, they have power. All right. Any other quality here for we can hear from somebody else? Anybody else has their hand raised? They can contribute. Hi, good evening. Probably, no, please, yeah, Mister. Um, yeah, the, the um, Maharaj Yudhisthira he had uh, full knowledge based upon 
the instructions to Bhishma Dev and um, uh, Lord Krishna. And therefore, he could um, rule rule the world because he didn't, it wasn't a concocted uh, ideology. And he just followed the instructions of the Lord. And um, as a result, you know, everything went very smoothly because it was just empowered. He was an instrument in Krishna's hands. So this is a very important principle for leadership, you know, within our movement and hopefully in the world someday. <laughs> what is the principle? Well, that one should have full knowledge. One should be well-trained. Yes, right. I would, I agree with that. Yes, one has to be well-trained. Proper training has to be there. Yeah, one training make up, and that seem, Prabhupada seems to indicate that here in the purport, the importance of the training that he had. He had, of course, he was, he had heard from Grandfather Bhishma, and he'd heard from Lord Krishna, and probably as a child also he'd been trained. Dronacharya was there teaching them. Other great sages were coming and teaching them in the royal family. They would certainly get the opportunity for good education. Education on, according to scriptures and according to moral principles, proper behaviour, standard behaviour, how to deal with others. Like that. So this tra education, training, very, very important. Yeah, and, and I appreciate also your point that you say he won't have any uh, of his own ideologies. Rather, he, who will be, what will be guiding him? He won't have his own ideologies, but he'll be guided by? Guru Sadhu and Shastra. Yeah, we would think so, that he must be taking guidance according to spiritual authorities. Guru Sadhu Shastra would be there. So in this way, Maharaj Yudhisthira would be able to properly rule the kingdom. And also, any other points? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes? In the beginning of the purple, it mentions how Maharaj Yudhisthira, um, although he's the monarch, he would work with full cooperation of his younger brothers who were very dharmic so he was the king but he would be speaking with obviously and taking advice from his younger brothers and later on it mentions also that he had no personal motive that they was perfectly religious so that's the ingredients for the kingdom i can imagine if there's a a king who's an atheist and all his advisors are atheists, then they're all going to have personal motives. <laughs> but only devotee can be free of personal motive. Yes, very nice. Yes, I would, I would, I would, I agree with this. I would appreciate your points here. Very nice that uh, he had cooperation with his brothers, and they didn't have any of their own motives in ruling. It wasn't that they had some self-motivation just for their own sense gratification. They were free from this kind of material desires. So that's it. very rare, of course, today to find people like that. Uh, And the result of the fact that the result of their ruling was shown that the world, Prabhupada writes, the world was happy in those days. 
So when you get the nice, the good ruler, then it makes so much easier. The people are happy. Just like we hear about during the times of Lord Ramachandra, Ram Raja, Lord Rama had the policy that anybody has any complaints, they can come. They can come and come, but nobody ever came. Everybody was so fully satisfied, so happy. Everyone had all their needs, they had no scarcity. And although Lord Ramachandra was there and he had the power, anybody can come and tell that whatever's wrong, whatever complaints they have, is ready to hear, but nobody would come. So similarly here, Maharaj Yudhisthira, the perfect ruler, that because he has no selfish motives, without any personal motive and manufactured ideology, therefore he could rule very nicely. And it mentions that the principles were infallible and universally applicable to everyone. So that's also a very interesting point, that it's, that it's applicable to everyone, for everyone, not just for a few, not just for some special people or for some other, some low class or high class or whatever, but it's principles which are valid for everyone, and infallible principles, infallible, they can't go wrong, they're going to work. It's all going to take place, it's all going to happen nicely. And so in this way we see some of the principles. Anybody else? Any other points somebody would like to add? Hare Krishna. Yes, Hare Krishna. Uh, uh, Maharaji, uh, one more thing is that uh, uh, here, here example is given uh, as Indra and uh, Chandra, they are the representative of a planet. Same way, there must be one leader for the entire who, who is representative of Krishna and then other leaders should follow because government doesn't mean, uh, go government means the person itself. So uh, there must be one leader of the earth who is representative of Krishna and then other leaders like uh, Pandwa's brothers were following him, other leaders should follow that one leader. Uh -huh. So you're you're saying you again you want to see uh, monarch monarchy one king one ruler. Yes, ma'am. But they have a saying that power corrupts, and absolute power could, can corrupt absolutely. This is the the problem when you put one person in charge. You see. And we see, for example, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati and our own founder Acharya Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, they didn't want to put one person in charge because they thought very dangerous. Very dangerous. You put one person in charge and if he goes wrong, then the whole thing falls apart. So that's the, the problem, right? How, what can you say in reply to this? Person uh, who is perfect representative of Krishna, and every all other leaders are following that one leader. That's why everyone is uh, going on the right path. So there is one leader. Uh, as I can understand, maybe my understanding may be totally wrong, Maharaj. Well, you're saying, yeah, Prabhupada, but you know, Prabhupada came. He became prominent in his old age. And Prabhupada didn't put one leader behind him to carry on. Yes, ma'am. You have to have some living person, right? We can't just follow, we can't just say, we follow Prabhupada's teachings, but we can't have Prabhupada to make the decisions for us every time. There's going to be many decisions to be made, and Prabhupada's not physically present. So just like we say, you have to take initiation, when you come to take initiation, you have to take from a living person. And similarly, we're going to, you're going to have a, a ruler, 
a, a, a leader, it has to be a leading, a, a person who's physically present to lead us. We cannot be led by somebody who was in the world a hundred years ago and who's gone now. You know, you can, you can take shelter of his teachings, you can associate with his teachings, but still you need the physical presence of people, of, of some leaders. Isn't it? Yes, ma'am. I, I got it, ma'am. Yes. So just like in ISKCON, we could say, well, we're all following Prabhupada. Yes, we are. Prabhupada is our Shiksha Guru for everyone. He's a Guru for all the devotees. And we take shelter of his teachings. But still, we need the living example. We need to have the living persons there to guide us and we have to see that example. And but my my point is that if there's only if it's just one person, then it's it's dangerous. So when we teach the, the disciple course, at least in ISKCON, we encourage the devotees that you don't just take shelter only of Prabhupada. But you have also, you have also Diksha Guru and you have also Shiksha Gurus, right? And in this way you have some good shelter, you have some good protection if something does go wrong. This is the danger with having just one person, a leader. If you have a great soul like Maharaj Yudhisthira, of course then, okay, it's not such a big problem because he's not going to go wrong. He's a, you know, he's, then the Pandavas are not ordinary souls, they're not ordinary souls coming out of the material world. Any response on this from the devotees? How do you feel? I have a response. Yes, Prabhu. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. Should we be in the hand raising modality? Or <laughs> so it's hard to know what to do. Um, so it, it seems to me like this with uh, Maharaj Yudhisthira, he was specifically empowered by Krishna. So I was specifically empowered by Krishna. So sometimes very, very empowered personalities come to the planet. And uh, that would, what, what would be, that's what would be required to make it work was monarchy. And, um, and that would be, I think, self-evident if such a personality were to manifest, if Krishna were to send someone like that. <clears throat> I mean, Prabhupada, um, his vision was that the GBC was the ultimate managerial authority for ISKCON. And, um, so that's, you know, in, in many ways, uh, there's one uh, professor, um, what's his name? I can't think now, but he was, um, he met with Srila Prabhupada in Philadelphia at the Durat Theatre one year. He was from Franklin and Marshall College. The name is escaping me right now. But he, um, recently there was a, um, presentation that he made at the uh, Harvard Divinity School and he compared um, Christianity, um, Islam and the Krishna consciousness movement and he's you know in his comparison he saw that the first 50 years of ISKCON was even better than the first 50 years of Christianity or Islam. Um, <clears throat> And why was that? I mean, Prabhupada had a vision. There's, you know, there's been challenges, no doubt, in the last 50 years, 50 plus years now. And um, some of the leaders didn't do well, but the GBC has kept going. And uh, it's kind of thriving. Some places not thriving as much as others, but it's doing remarkably well. There's so many books being distributed, so many new devotees joining, Literally millions of people are coming to Krishna consciousness. 
You know, the Mayapur Institute now has a, the biggest enrollment ever, all online. <laughs> so, um, you know, things, things are uh, looking up. But <clears throat> that still in all, there's always that uh, scope, you know, that, that there will be a specifically empowered personality that Krishna will send to enact this principle that comes from Vedic times of um, one world government and spiritual communism. Um, definitely part of Prabhupada's vision, he saw the fallibility of it, trying to enact that after his departure. The uh, same thing with Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. But that's not to say that some great personality won't come. Anyway. Okay, yes. yes some people say like this, that some, we need some great personality to come. Hmm. And in the absence of great personalities, then we just uh, simply uh, <laughs> have our GBC or we have our the board, board of management. Of course, in Maharaj Yudhishthir's time, Maharaj Yudhishthir would also be guided by Brahmanas. There was also the Brahmana, Brahminical council would be there, you know, the Brahmins would be there to guide him and he'd be will, he'd certainly have them be to, hear, to hear about how to improve the government. It's not that he was just independent, just doing everything on his own. He had his four brothers. Then he had, he had all the brahmanas there as well, certainly he'd be hearing from them. And he, he's going to also perform yagyas, do sacrifices, great sacrifices with the help of the brahmanas. And of, above all that, he has Lord Krishna personally there. He has Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead there, behind him or backing him up. So what more could you want than that? Okay, so let's, uh, let me see where am I? Okay, identify principle, okay we covered this. Going ahead, here's a quote from the purport. The conception of one world state, Chin Master Me Prabhu just mentioned that about the one world state, it can only be feel, fulfilled if we can follow the infallible authority. An imperfect human being cannot create an ideology acceptable to everyone. Only the perfect and the infallible can create a program which is applicable at every place and can be followed by all in the world. So this idea, the one world state, <laughs> very idealistic, hard to imagine today. But in Maharaj Yudhishthir's time it was like that, that he was ruling the world. Although there were different states, but they were all under the one Hastinapur, the royal palace was there and they, would, they ruled the whole world and he could form, he could perform the Rajasuya sacrifice. Of course he was guided by proper authorities. The imperfect person cannot come up. We have a lot of imperfect persons. We have like, you know, Karl Marx and his communist theory. And then you have, uh, you have different political parties in every different country. In America you have Republicans and uh, in England you have the Conservative and the Labours and the Liberal and then you have the Scottish National Party and you have so many different individuals. They all come up with their ideology, what they want to do. So what, what is applicable? can be followed by the whole world. This is the point. 
Prabhupada writes, it is the person who rules, not the impersonal government. If the person is perfect, the government is perfect. So the government's not there just there to make rules. The government are there, they're meant to take care of the people. It's the gov we don't put a government in place just to make laws for the people to follow. The government are meant to provide, to make arrangements, to provide everything for the people. And Prabhupada spoke, one of the lectures I was hearing Prabhupada speak, he was saying he had gone to the UK and he saw, he said, in England they can practically produce nothing. He said, just some potatoes is about all they can grow. He said, but the government make arrangements and they bring in so many vegetables and fruits from all over the world to provide for the people. So that's the duty of the government, to provide, make sure that there's always enough food for the people. If there's a scarcity of food, then it comes on the government. The government are not doing their job. So government have that kind of duty, to take care of the people, keep the people happy. If the, if the government make laws and the people come out and riot against it, there was a case in Hong Kong uh, a, a year or two ago, the government made a law and like two million people came out on the streets to protest about it. And so, you know, that was a big mistake of the government. They didn't understand the minds of the people. The government have to know how to keep the people happy. And you can't just beat them and, and, and make them happy. That's not really the mood of a leader. Leadership is not, you can't just beat the people into submission to do what they want. You, the leadership, when you have the proper leadership, the people will want to follow. There has to be that mood that, that, that you, you're willing to sacrifice your life for these people that you really appreciate them. There has to be that kind of loving relationship between the, the, the mass of people and the leader. Therefore, the, exec, the executive head must be a trained person like Maharaj Yudhisthira, and he must have the full autocratic power to rule over the world. So Prabhupada mentions about how, he, yeah, we should have a, a, an autocratic ruler. <laughs> so, very, very special. Put somebody in charge. Could you imagine one person ruling the whole world? <laughs> I think just recently, just the other day, they had a, a revolution in Burma and Myanmar. And they had put a democratic party in power, but one of the dictators, he came and they've overthrown the government and a lot of instability going on. So this is very common all over the world, even just for one little country. What to speak of the whole planet, if you have one person ruling the whole planet. Another quote, this world is created by Krishna and he wants to see it properly maintained. And who will maintain? His own representative, not the demons. Therefore, king is supposed to be a representative of Krishna. He will maintain this world properly, a Vaishnava. He knows how to utilize everything for Krishna. So an important qualification is he must be a representative of Krishna. Without that, then we cannot be very sure of the future. The aim of this creation is giving these conditioned souls another chance for liberation. That is the purpose. When he saw, now Maharaj Yudhisthira is situated on the throne for the control of the world, he, Pritamana Bhubhavaha, he, he became satisfied. There is my real representative and he will work nicely. Prabhupada lecturing on the second verse of this chapter here in Mayapur. So he understood 
Krishna is thinking, there is my real representative. He will work nicely. So Bhishma Dev was happy to see Maharaj Yudhisthira on the throne and Lord Krishna is also happy to see Maharaj Yudhisthira on the throne. So they have, they trust him, they have faith in him. And because they have faith, certainly many others will also have faith. Maharaj Yudhisthira had no ideology of his own. He had but to follow the instructions of the infallible Lord and the Lord's representative and the authorized agent, Bhishma Dev. It is instructed in the Shastras that one should follow the great authority and the infallible Lord without any personal motive and manufactured ideology. So some important points here, you can see no personal motive, no manufactured ideology. We brought this up, right? And he must be following the instructions, follow the Lord and Sadhu, Shastra and Guru, right? Sadhu, Bhishma Dev, Shastra spoken by Lord Krishna, Guru is also Krishna. Therefore, it was possible for Maharaj Yudhisthira to rule the whole world, including the seas, because the principles were infallible and universally applicable to everyone. So, to have a world ruler, Maharaj Yudhisthira, one world under one king. <laughs> Certainly, uh, we could think, well, it's very nice, we don't have to pay for so many politicians, we just have one, polit one ruler, makes it much easier. If you have any complaints, any problems, you just go to that person or to his representative. Of course, how many people can you take care of? Psychologists today, they say, you can't have more than 150 close friends or connections. To have more than 150 people will be practically impossible. You can't remember them. You can't remember who they are, you know. You know somebody has a, if you have a thousand disciples, you don't know them. You can't remember them. So you can have about 150 close connections, but no more than that. But after that, then you have to have another level. You have to have, a, you know, levels of people so that people need to feel cared for. You have to set up a system, just like we try to do in ISKCON. We try to set up systems like that so that everybody is taken care of. They feel wanted, they feel connected. So, here's a little exercise for you. Discuss the conditions brought about by Maharaj Yudhisthira following the Lord's plan. How many people do we have here today? We have uh, 20 Maharaj. 20? So, yeah. how many groups can we make? Uh, 20 can participate more. Yes, so, so we want to have about, uh, we could have six, we could have six, six groups, yeah? three people in each group and four in two groups. Is that all right? Because yes, I made, we made it like this, you know, six, six groups. So group one and group three will take text four. And group two and group four will take text five, and group three and group six will take text six. And we want you to consider, on the basis of this particular verse, present the points which uh, come, came about due to Maharaj Yudhisthira's rule. What were the conditions which Maharaj Yudhisthira developed within the kingdom 
in order to bring natural prosperity for all the people. According to the Lord's plan, follow the Lord the Lord's plan. What what are the significant points which Prabhupada makes in these two in these three texts? So can you make uh, six groups, Maharaji? Already done. Already done? Okay, so everyone go to the group and note the text. Four. Oh, if you're in one, two, one or three, then text number four. Maharaj, you need to tell them, tell them the timing, how much time. Yeah, uh, ten minutes. About ten, fifteen minutes would be good. We'll see how much time you need. Thank you. Group 5 needs to do for text 6 because here it is written group 3 and 6. Mataji, sorry, there might be a problem with the with the structure of the question. Because um, you've got um, group one and three doing text four, you've got group three again doing text six. You don't understand the question? Yeah, if you just look at the groups, Mataji. I need to ask Maharaj. Maharaj, are you there? Yes. What's so the you join the class and if there is any confusion, others will... Which group are you in, Prabhu? Okay, all right. Thank you, Maharaj. I'm going to join. Okay. Which group? Okay. Which group was he in? Sorry, Maharaji, can you just send me the message to join the room again? It seems like it's disappeared off my screen. Yeah, I need the message also, Maharaji. Can you hear me? Hmm. She's not hearing, yeah? Those points we could mention. Then the purple. The basic principle of economic development is centered on land and cows. The necessities of human society are food grains, fruits, milk, minerals, clothing, wood, etc. One requires all these items to fulfill the material needs of the body. Certainly, one does not require flesh and fish or iron at all.
Lord and sages. That's why he had no enemy. So that's why he could rule over the whole kingdom, whole earth, very easily. Okay, that's a good point. Gopal Kanisha Prabhu, you got that point. Yes, okay. So maybe we should take down about four or five points. So that's how many points do you have at the moment? And the, the other point you could put is in terms of the conditions stating here that at that time the whole world was united. So everyone was free from anxiety, diseases, etc. How much time do we have left before 10 minutes is up? No, you have another five minutes. Go ahead. We broke? Anybody notice? You, you, you can have five, you have five more minutes. Five more minutes? Yeah. Ah. Okay, so um, because, so anybody want to make some points to start with? Yes, we're going to have that two minutes. Why don't you make one, and then we'll share the forum, okay? That may be the best. Yes, yes, please. Okay. Uh, one more point actually. Though we should not exploit the natural reserves. If you don't exploit the natural reserves, and all the, all the Ishavarsa principle of the Ishopanishad, mm -hmm. if you follow the uh, everything belongs to the Lord, and we have to take what 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 is uh, your quota. Then uh, and don't exploit the natural reserves. Then uh, it is successful. Right? Hare Krishna. So you can. Uh, Hare Krishna, Padma Sundari, can you hear me? Yes, Maharaj. Yeah, I think we can give them another five minutes. Okay, Maharaj.
um, what is the assignment we, we got to see how did Yiddish marriage bring the conditions of, of the world to prosperity? Was that the question? Yeah. Yes. yes, it's the conditions. Yes. Discuss the conditions for the How how he did it? That's the question, right? Yes. Uh, oh, well, it's not, not really how he did. Not. It's not really how he did it. It is uh, what happened oh. during his oh, okay. reign. Okay. Okay. What conditions he brought? <clears throat> okay. And the, on the end of the purpose of uh, mentioned. I think the question is, what was the benefits from Raj Yudhisthira's rule? So, um, well, one is that no animals were slaughtered, isn't it? Yes. Not just the cows, but the innocent animals were protected. Right. And also, artificial luxury is like, like the cinema cars that get your flash, no need. Yeah, there is no um, hotels that is uh, not necessary to that. When there's a... Uh, Places with prostitution, etc. You mentioned, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Just looking here. Um, there was no need for cinemas, cinemas right. cars, radio, and then. Yeah. Um, Blesses. Everything works out fine. Basically, it's Mother Nature and Father the Almighty. Mother Nature and Father Almighty. So these things uh, goes together, and then everybody will be happy. Mother Nature and Father Almighty. How much more time do you think you need, Jan Master Me Prabhu? I think we're all set. All set? Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll just tell her. Let me check the other groups. All right. So, any other points? Um, are you everything clear, Amala Manjari? Yeah, I got four points. How are you doing, Prabhus? Do you need much more time? You finished? Okay, good. Yeah. Thank you. Maharaj, can I close the rooms? Yes, please close the rooms. Thank you. I can't hear you. You're muted. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, please close it.
Friends, it looks like everyone's back from their room. Oh, good. Everyone's back. Okay. I was just looking. Where's the board here? <laughs> I thought there was a board. We could write down some of the main points in the discussion. There is a board, Maharaj. You can, when you share, you can see a white board. When I share? Yeah, sharing screen. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. Has a white board. Right. Okay. So, uh, which one we want? Uh, whiteboard. Okay. Thank you. So, group one. Would somebody like to type for us? The main points. Hare Krishna Raj. Yeah. Reporting in for group one. Okay. But I, I, I need a volunteer, someone to write on the board. Can everyone see the whiteboard? Yeah. Okay. Who, who's, type, who's a typist? Ask you for a request, I may try. Okay. Okay, so um, speaking on verse 4, some points from verse 4 in the purple. Um, the cows had plenty of grazing ground and they would produce enough, they would produce plenty of milk. You muted yourself, Prabhu. Oh, am I? Well, it doesn't show mute here. And now we can hear. It's not muted. Okay. Okay, sorry about that. Something happened there. So from uh, from, from verse four, uh, the cows produced enough milk in profusion. There was a profusion of milk. Um, the cows are well taken care of. Not only the cows, but Papa mentions in the purple, but also all the animals were protected. All right. So we could say. Animals, oh, an, animal, cow protection or animal protection. Yeah, yeah. cow protection. Papa mentioned the defenseless creatures who cannot protect themselves. They, um, they was all protected. All right. Would you like to add that on the whiteboard, Prabhu? First one. Uh, I'm not able to write. Mataji, how to write? I'm not able to write. You, you can type. I'm trying to type, Mataji. <laughs> Okay. You need to, I think it's perhaps only the host who can do that, or the co-host can write on the board. No, no, everybody can do that. Uh, Maharaj doesn't uh, move the cursor, then you can no. What do I need Maharaj, to do? Cursor is being moving uh, when I am trying, but it's not typing anything. Okay. I am giving a... Are you not able to type anything? No, Mataji. There's a pen that's visible, so it looks like it's in the wrong modality. The whiteboard. Uh, even, even I'm not able to draw. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah, Maraj, can I do the screen sharing so yep. that uh, I can allow them to Okay, add? please. Yeah. I'm just stopping your sharing. <clears throat> okay, Maharaj, I think it, uh, it's be better I type. Okay, so number one, cow protection. And the result was a an, an pro profuse supply of milk. Okay. And what's another point, Prabhu? Uh, there was some um, regulated rainfall. In other words, it wouldn't rain too much, it wouldn't rain too less. Okay, so seasons regulated. And that regulated rainfall in conjunction with astronomical 
influences produce plenty of jewels and diamonds. And oh. <laughs> okay. Seasons regulated. Uh, what to say? And um, combined with, with astronomical influence, then it produced jewels and grains to regulate its seasons in, in combination with um, astronomical influence produced jewels and, and uh, gems. Astronomical. <laughs> it should be astrological, not astronomical. <laughs> and perhaps just we come to some other points uh, saying, well, also there was no um, need for for artificial things apart from this things like seminar of cinemas, places of prostitution, etc. So no cinemas, no places of... Yeah, just look in the purple, um, yes. No places of decadence, yeah, there, sir. You said there's no cinema, cars, radio, flesh and hotels. <laughs> Mother mentioned in our group also that this led to everything being all, um, all, all organic. Everything was organic, nothing was, um, there was no chemicals, everything, the earth was producing all the vegetables in abundance. So oh, all right. All right. Papa doesn't use that word in the purple, but. Yeah, you brought it in. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Okay, very good. That's group number. One. All right, now gr group number one was doing the same one as group number three, three. right? Yes, Mother. So group number three, do you have any other points to add to this? Uh, yes, Maharaj. One point was um, when the ruler is in alignment with the plan of the Lord and emphasis of the Lord, uh, and if the ruler is trained by Guru, Sadhu and Shastra and is caring for the Praja and wants everyone to be Krishna conscious, then Krishna blesses the kingdom with everything and then everyone will be happy. Aligned with the plan of the Lord, everyone will be happy. And what is trained by? Guru Sadhu Shastra. Okay. Everyone? Okay. Any other points? Everything else would maybe. Your mother, if Mother Nature and Father Almighty are happy, then there is happiness. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, we'll hear from group number two. Yes, Maharaj. I was selected by the devotees. So, the, the river, oceans, hills, mountains, forests, etc., they tax their water to the king and uh, To the king and the sacred sacred is to such as is to take refuge under the protection of the supreme lord so the all the all the things uh, which which were mentioned uh, protection of the supreme lord is what you should attend to take refuge under the Protection of the Supreme Lord. Then uh, the ruler shall understand that uh, everything is Lord. Everything is what? 
everything uh, is Lord's. It's uh, the possession of the Lord. Belongs to the Supreme Lord. Everything belongs to the Supreme Lord. Everything is the property of the Lord. Yes, the, the king shall understand this. And also that uh, everything is done under the san sanction of the Lord. Oh, the sanction, everything. Yeah. Yes. Then. Then the, the duty of the ruler is to please the Lord. No, you're not really answering the question so well, Prabhu. Is that? You haven't really dealt with the question what we wanted from you. We, we were discussing about the, the, what was the principles, what Maharaj Yudhisthira have done with the... the but we, why, why, why the things were like this? Well, that's not what you were asked. Right? We wanted to, to, to see the results. We wanted not to know how, how the, the planet prospered under Maharaj Yudhisthira's reign. We spoke yes, about his qualities, we wanted to see the effects. So there, there was the things that the, the rivers, oceans, hills put the taxes to the king. Yeah, but how did they pay their taxes to the king? Uh, they give everything. Uh, um, okay. okay, let's hear from the other group. Let's hear group number four. Is it group four or group five? Group four, huh? Yeah, uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. I was selected for the uh, group four. Can you, uh, with permission, shall I start? Or? Yes, please start. Okay, so the group uh, came out with the points uh, that uh, in the uh, reign of Maharaj Yudhishthir, uh, Maharaj Yudhishthir was a representative of the Lord and uh, the secret of success for his rule was that he used to take the shelter of the Lord and the Lord was always pleased with him. So uh, the rivers, hills, drugs and uh, all the uh, natural resources were abundantly available uh, for the happiness of, these, of his subjects. Because the okay, was so natural resources were all available. In the reign of Maharaj Yudhishthir, there was no exploitation, there were no industries, so everybody used to take their own quota and they were not uh, greedy and uh, everybody uh, was not uh, believing in any exploitation. There was no enmity between man and man, man and animal, so everybody was friendly to each other and uh, they were not having any vested interest of exploiting the material nature or natural resources. So, oh, very good, yes. People were harmonious, they worked together peacefully, cooperated. So, uh, so there was no competition between individual and individual and nation and any nation. So everybody and everything was in total and perfect harmony. Okay. Good. Anything which, else? Which verse number is he covering? Which verse? Verse number five. Verse number five. Okay. So uh, I request other members if I missed out any points, so they may uh, kindly add. No, this was very good. Thank you. Okay. 
So we'll go to another group. We can hear group three. We, oh, we oh, we, oh, we already did. We, group number, which one? Group two, three, group four, group five. Group five wasn't on the list. <laughs> oh, there's no group five. Group six. But we answered, we had the discussion. Uh, we, we discussed uh, text number six. Where are the answers? I don't see any answers. Text number six. We had group number six. Group number six. Uh, number six uh, we had uh, text number six. So the points we come up with. Uh, so the whole world was united. And as the world was united and all the inhabitants were free from anxiety, disease and excessive heat and cold. People were not only economically well to do but also physically fit and undisturbed by supernatural power. Undisturbed by supernatural power were not only economically well to do but also physically fit. And not disturbed by bodily and mental agonies. And all <coughs> agents were protected directly by the Lord and his, his agents. <coughs> all citizens were directly protected um, by the Lord and his authorized uh, agents. Very good. Okay. So we can see the benefits of having such a wonderful ruler. <laughs> How well, wonderful. Was, there was a mistake on the slide. Instead of having group five, it said group three again. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, apparently group five did function. That's what Chandrika Mataji was saying. Uh huh. So got a report to make, it seems. Okay. Let's hear group five. Uh, group five. Uh, we have taken text, uh, six, six, num, text number six. I just like to add some of the points which uh, were missed up. Uh, one was the nation had no enemies. No enemies. And uh, the king was fully blessed. He was obedient to the Lord and the sages. And there was full cooperation between man, God and nature. Cooperation between man, God and nature. He's already here. Okay. There was no exploitation of others. No exploitation of others. Okay. Okay, very good. 
Thank you very much. We can see so many wonderful situations on the planet because of the rule of Maharaj Yudhisthira. Everybody's... Huh? Can we stop the sharing? Yes. We can stop the sharing now. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we'll go back to the slide. All right. So the conditions brought about by Maharaj Yudhisthira's rule were very wonderful. Everyone was provided for, everyone was happy. Of course, it wasn't Kali Yuga, that's one point. Lord Krishna was still on the planet. Lord Krishna hadn't disappeared yet. So the world was very auspicious, a very wonderful situation, everything was very nice. Okay. Some quotes from Prabhupada, from purport of text number four. Therefore, in contrast with the mod in contrast with the modern advanced civilized form of government, an autocracy like Maharaj Yudhisthira's is by far superior to a so-called democracy in which animals are killed and a man less than an animal is allowed to cast votes for another less than animal man. So, this is an important point, protecting the animals. And Prabhupada compares these leaders to less than animal. <laughs> less than animal. Cast votes for another less than animal man. Prabhupada certainly has a a realistic opinion of these so-called politicians and they're nothing compared to someone like Maharaj Yudhisthira. To produce a new species of humanity at the present moment on the basis of God consciousness and perfection of human life, the ideology of godly communism, the world has to again follow in the footsteps of kings like Maharaj Yudhisthira or Parikshit. So, just to look at the objectives, we talked about chapter 9, we heard about the passing away of Grandfather Bhishma Dev, and chapter 10 comes into the, the rule of Maharaj Yudhisthira. And we spoke about the contents of the chapter Shonika asked, asked about how did Maharaj Yudhisthira rule and Sutta Goswami replies and this, we've been hearing about the opulent condition of the planet under the rule of Maharaj Yudhisthira, right? And then later on we'll hear also about Lord Krishna going to Dwarka and the prayers offered by the ladies of Hastinapur glorifying Lord Krishna. By way of preaching application, we've talked about the conditions of the world during the reign of Maharaj Yudhisthira, covered in these first few verses, how the world was so opulent, no scarcity, everything's very nice, very wonderful, people even working together harmoniously under one king. Personal application. Certain principles of leadership Prabhupada establishes during the reign of Maharaj Yudhisthira and discuss their application for a leader in ISKCON. So this is something we can think about now. General principles of leadership which Prabhupada establishes and how we could apply them for a leader in ISKCON. Any thoughts on this? Certain principles of leadership. We spoke about different principles of leadership. You know, what do, how did we describe Maharaj Yudhisthira? First of all, training, right? So, this is, a, this is coming into role nowadays within ISKCON. We have things like the GBC College, right? And you have the... Uh, 
you have also the sannyasis also, they get special courses and training, and they meet together online and these kind of things. So training is coming more into the role in ISKCON, the, the, the opportunity for leaders to get training. Previously, the, the, in Prabhupada's time, the leaders really didn't have any training. And we were very young and inexperienced. So certainly it would be difficult, there would be problems. But nowadays, you know, nowadays to be a leader, you know, they have so much training, they have to go through. Any other comments? What are other leadership principles in ISKCON, which Pr Prabhupada establishes? Yes. Um, I heard one thing that um, is mentioned that uh, the, the the leader was always looking for the welfare of the citizens. This was his highest priority. The welfare of who? Of the citizens or the the people he's he's um, that he's leading. That's very good point. Very good, yeah, because I always hear, when I listen to these different uh, leadership classes, they always speak about the importance of people. Rather than thinking about results, you have to think about people. It's very, very important. And so I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, Prabhu, a very nice point. And uh, how do we apply it in ISKCON? Do you see that as far as leaders in ISKCON go, that we're very conscious about people? Do we give proper attention to the people? Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, Pranams. Maharaj, um, uh, I have been involved with some of the um, surveys, etc., discussions with various temples. And one of the points that came up was that uh, the people, at least in the groups that I had uh, discussed this with, were felt that they had very little interaction with the leadership themselves. There seems to be a disjoint. Well, when you speak of leaders, you, are you talking about managerial leaders? So this, you see, this when we we have to understand leaders not just simply in the sense of somebody who's a an, a manager, an administrator. Someone could be a leader without doing all of the, you know, without having this title, you know, and having that authority. But they could be they could be seen as a leader. I think this is a, 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 a an important point that within ISKCON, we have to give an opportunity for leaders, that there are leaders in ISKCON, there are people who are leaders without having these authoritative positions, without being big figures and administrators. Yes, uh, Maharaj, uh, perhaps I was making a slightly different point, is that, uh, that the leadership per se is, is deemed to be uh, the topmost tier is the GBC. And um, this is just a point I was sharing on my observation that uh, people felt that there, there was a disjoint, uh, that the, the leadership, the GBC leadership, they were unable to connect with them uh, in the way that they wanted to. To connect with? The GBC. Don't connect with who? Sorry. Who did who do the who, who did the GBC not connect with? They they are saying that the GBC. At, this is not a general comment. This is specific to some of the others. Some disturbance. Mute yourself. <laughs> Maharaj, can you hear? I can hear you, Prabhu. Go ahead. Right, so the point, the point was that the people, that, my goodness, there's so much of chaos. I think, 
you guys. I think I will drop. I should drop this point. <laughs> no, it's a good point, Prabhu. It's, it's very, very important point. I'm glad you brought it up. Please don't drop it. Thank you. The, 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 the main point here was that Maharaj, that there are many yatras, uh, and I did extensive studies with them. They felt that the GBC leadership per se, uh, in their zones. Were they were not connected with them? They didn't know what was the actual role of the GBC, how much time they spent in their yatras, uh, what were their specific um, achievements. They couldn't define them. And I was doing a sort of a not a reform, but how to improve various yatras around ISKCON. So, so I just happened to have that um, a role, if you like. Uh, trying to improve various yatras and, and as a strategic management uh, consultant. So this was a point that came up, Maharaj. Oh, yeah, I'm sure it would come up, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> uh, we have a lot to, uh, we have a long way to go uh, with these things. Uh, actually, I, I, I got hold of a video which I do want to show you today. It's about it, well, maybe you remember when the terrorists came in the Taj Hotel? Did you see that video? Yes, ma'am. Did you yes, see? Yes. Oh, you've seen it, eh? No, oh, okay. Well, oh, it's, it's amazing. It's really amazing, Maharaj. Oh, I know. I was, I'm was. i really amazed when I saw it. Yeah, it's just wonderful. Anyway, we'll show it to the other devotees. Maybe not everyone has seen it. Yeah, Maharaj, I have not seen it. I have one uh, request uh, for to make. You asked one question to Asa Prabhuji and... Uh, you mentioned that how uh, the welfare of the uh, people has to be applied in ISKCON. So, Maharaj, uh, kindly enlighten us, please. <laughs> I wish I... <laughs> I don't have the ability to solve all the problems in ISKCON. <laughs> but we want to be aware, you know, that there are certain leadership principles, and as we said, training, with good training, then we can implement them. You know, what did Prabhupada expect from leaders? Uh, Prabhupada expected perfect sadhana. He expected very good sadhana. That is very important for all leaders. They must show the right example, their sadhana. You know, it, it's supposed to be a principle that someone who's on the GBC, that they will come to Mongol RT, they will attend the morning program, you know, these kind of things. But nowadays, you know, the, the way ISKCON goes today, <laughs> things are mm, not quite the same. But Prabhupada wanted that anyway, you know, chanting 16 rounds, four principles, and morning program must be there for somebody who is a leader in ISKCON. Essential. Uh, uh, Maharaj? Yes? Um, along those lines, there's a, a point that I'd like to bring up. Um, before the Bhaktivedanta Veda based folio came out, there was a DAS version of that. And Bir Krishna Maharaj did research and other letters that Srila Prabhupada wrote to GBCs. And the bottom line, the thing that he emphasized the most was that the GBC take the responsibility to make sure that everybody in all the temples in their zone went to the morning program. That was the number one priority that Prabhupada gave them. And of course, to do that, you've got to set the example. So it's an important aspect. And then naturally, personal exchanges will take place, you know, in the, in the ecstasy of uh, sadhana. The devotees will They'll see their leader, and uh, you know there'll be there'll be friendships that develop from that. There'll be connections. Yeah, and you develop a lot of trust just by you know spending time every morning sitting chanting japa together, or by hearing the person give class and like that. You develop trust in this person. Bhakti Tirtha Swami was always present the full morning program with Japa. I, I saw the same thing with, he had so much love be, between himself and his um, followers. Same thing with Radha Swami. You know, he's always there chanting Japa. 
was a devotee, he said, it's super powerful. That's my experience, you know. So there's a whole mood that's created by that. And then, then, then you see temples like Chopadi and Pune and Calcutta. They have the strongest sadhana practices in the world, practically speaking. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. the leader sets the standard. Yeah. Yeah, right. So this very important point, sadhana. Yeah, must be above any uh, doubt, right? No. Should be no doubts about the person. You must have full trust in them. And then you can follow their instructions wholeheartedly. Hmm. Okay, and Maharaj Yudhisthira himself was obedient to the instructions he got. He took instruction from Bhishma Dev and from Lord Krishna and he faithfully carried out their, their instructions. So the same way Prabhupada gives instructions and the leaders in Iskon have to follow these instructions themselves. Prabhupada taught us that uh, action, uh, the, the action speaks louder than words. If you just simply give instructions to others, it's not as it, but if you don't follow yourself, it's no good. And uh, any other points you can think about? You, applicable for a leader in ISKCON, which we learn from Maharaj Yudhisthira? We spoke about training and we spoke also about, now we spoke about the importance of the sadhana. Uh, there's one point, that, another point that occurs to me is that if he, um, that a leader should see himself, should be a servant leader and always be meditating on how I can help my praja, how I can help them be stronger in their own Krishna consciousness. So that kind of meditation is it's just going to bear powerful fruit if that's the modality of his consciousness. Yes. Right. Okay. That is concerned for the welfare of the the fellow devotees, Maharaj Yudhisthira, by his rule, everything was arranged, everyone was provided for. So the same way. Leader, ISKCON leaders, they want to also be concerned for the welfare of other devotees. Devotee care, I mean, I, I see it goes on very nicely. I saw Gopal Krishna Maharaj is very caring, you know, he really went out of his way to help devotees. I remember when Shamsundar Prabhu, the astrologer and his wife, they were in a bad accident and his wife was practically bedridden for about a year. Maharaj took care of them. He arranged for them to be taken care of in Delhi temple. You know, so like that, he's very caring. So certainly Maharaj Yudhisthira also caring. You know, devotee leaders also, they, they care for others. It shouldn't just be in their own world and managing. I have to manage, <laughs> thinking about only their managing they have to think about the, the welfare of others. Difficult job, big job. Okay. Uh, Maharaj? Yes? I was, I was also thinking about the personal behavior of uh, the leader with the different uh, devotees and also in different position. No? Personal behavior? <laughs> The example, yes. Well, we, we spoke about that. We spoke about the importance of sadhana and showing perfect behavior. Yeah, must be very strict. I was thinking more about the dealing with the devotees, uh, like uh, behavior. Dealings with devotees? Mm -hmm. Can you give an example? Yes, I, I was thinking about uh, how the leader uh, is uh, dealing with different kinds of devotees, like devotees which are under under his protection, devotees which are like others' leaders, or 
you know, like Maharaj Yudhishthira when, when uh, he was dealing with, uh, when Krishna came to him, to visit him, Krishna gives the example that he uh, fall down under the, under the feet of Maharaj Yudhishthira, he embraced Arjuna and uh, I was that kind of dealing with it. Okay, so, yeah, having proper respect and relationships, personal relationships. Okay, we have to go on. Mood and mission. We didn't really pick out any examples from Srila Prabhupada's uh, purports about Prabhupada's mood and mission. But Prabhupada did speak about the importance of the cows and he does, he does speak about how we don't want, th th these factories don't really help us much, they're not of any, they're not really serving any good purpose, just for a few people who they enjoy the wealth and everybody else has to work in the horrible conditions of the factory. So Prabhupada certainly liked a more natural way of life, simple living, high thinking, more natural living, we have time to cultivate Krishna consciousness. Somebody else picked up any other examples of Prabhupada's mood and mission? Prabhupada certainly wanted a better life for everyone. Prabhupada, before he left the world, he said, if I have done anything, I have given a better life for so many people. So Krishna consciousness is to give people a better life, and not only spiritually but material, materially also. And material life means enjoying the gifts of nature, not just the artificial resources, you know, the electronics and everything. But the natural, the gifts of nature, Prabhupada explains, when you, if you have cotton and silk and you have food, you have grains, you have milk and you have jewels, everything provided by nature, what more do you want? You don't need, we don't need these cinemas, we don't need this Wi-Fi, we don't need all of these things. We simply need Krishna consciousness. So this is really Prabhupada's mood and mission. I don't know how relevant these things are to ISKCON leaders, <laughs> difficult to apply these things. You know, Prabhupada also was not against technology and he expected us to keep up with technology in order to distribute Krishna consciousness we have to keep up with technology, just like we're using these different technological innovations, the satellites and so on, for the Zoom transmissions. And so Prabhupada expected us to do these things. We have to keep up with the innovations. We have to have websites, we have websites and all these things. We have to be like everyone, we can't be behind. But. We're not dependent on it. If it all falls apart, then we don't mind. <laughs> we just, you know, go along with, the, with the, what's going on in the world today. We just keep up with it. But we're not dependent on it. It's not like we're in love with it. Okay, the final quote by Prabhupada. Without being educated properly, the mass of people are following in the footsteps of the vested interests by exploiting natural reserves. And therefore, there is acute competition between individual and individual, and nation and nation. There is no control by the trained agent of the Lord. We must look into the defects of modern civilization by comparison here and should follow in the footsteps of Maharaj Yudhisthira to cleanse man and wipe out anachronisms, <laughs> right? Wipe out anachronisms, <laughs> cleanse man. We have a lot of cleaning to do. 
Okay, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Now, if anybody's interested, if you want, I, I, I can give you the link to that video about the Taj Mahal. It's about leadership from the bottom. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, please. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah? Okay, just a minute and I'll give you the link. Yes, ma'am. Let me find where it is. I think I've got it in my handphone here. 